Hey there, this is our introduction to the book of Ecclesiastes, the focus of our new series, Life, What's the Point? Well, I'm Nate with Christ Church Montevideo, and here in Montevideo, we are no strangers to moisture. We have the unique experience of extremely humid winters. We have days where sometimes the air is completely, almost completely saturated, and it creates this shared grand battle against mold and fungus and clothes that can be left out for days without drying. Now this is a shock to people from U.S. states like mine where we have much colder winters in terms of temperature but they're much drier. So the wetness in the air here just makes it feel so much colder than the temperature says which makes it a challenge to <laughs> try to explain to my family and friends how cold it truly feels when the temperature doesn't look that bad to them. And it's surprising to them, it blows their minds, that we can sometimes see our breath here with really mild temperatures, like maybe 10 degrees Celsius, where it would take maybe 15 degrees less to experience that where I'm from. But if you take the time to focus on the vapor from our breath or from a boiling kettle of water, you'll see that the vapor, the steam, it, it rushes out quickly, but then it dissipates in seconds. And you may have heard people describing life like that, a vapor. The metaphor comes from the brother of Jesus, actually. James said, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? For you are a vapor or a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. You see, when you're a little kid, time seems to take forever, especially when you're in school. But as we get older, every year that goes by, the faster life seems to go, and the truer that verse seems. Because in the big picture of history and time, every human life, however long, is just a speck of dust. It's here and gone, just like that. And that's not a particularly cheery thought for most of us. That's probably like why many of us prefer not to think about it. But in the following weeks, we want to explore the challenging book of Ecclesiastes. And if you've ever read through it casually, you probably would say, wow, <laughs> that wasn't particularly cheery. And you might have asked yourself, is this really the Bible? Is the Bible saying that everything, that life, is meaningless? Because in a lot of our versions, the word that's translated as meaningless or vanity it appears 42 times. But it's an attempt to translate the Hebrew word chavel, which means vapor or breath. So it's really saying that all of life, everything, is a vapor, it's a breath. Life is short. So no doubt this is where James got the idea for his famous quote. Life is just here for a little while, and then it vanishes. And not only does Ecclesiastes connect forward to James in the New Testament, but it also surprisingly connects back to Genesis in the beginning. So I learned something pretty interesting, I think, and uh, you've probably heard of the story of Cain and Abel. Abel, who pleased God with his faith, was the first murder victim in history at the hands of his brother. But the Hebrew name Abel is that exact same word, chavel, which means vapor or breath. Which makes complete sense because in the biblical narrative, Abel is born and killed in the span of just seven verses. His life was a vapor, a flash in the pan, there for a little while and gone just like that. See, Abel personified what the, the wise teacher who wrote Ecclesiastes was wrestling with. The shortness of life, and also the injustice of life, and the unfulfilled potential of this life. So the author of Ecclesiastes, he clearly and skillfully used this vivid Hebrew word picture from the name of one of the most famous figures 
of old for his audience to drive home his big question. What is the point? What is the point of life? This Khalil life, short, unfair, and unfulfilling. And maybe now we can understand why many have called Ecclesiastes the most modern book of the Bible. Because it asks questions, it experiments with ideas, and it struggles with doubts that are being asked and experimented with and wrestled with today. Not just by scholars and philosophers, but by any average person that wants to know what life is all about, if anything, and how we can live a, a full and satisfying life, if possible, and if this is all there is. But to figure out how to read a book like this, we need to know a little bit about the author and the, the genre and some overarching themes that he's trying to communicate. So who is this author anyway? Well, there is some debate, but historically it's always been attributed to King Solomon. He was the son of King David, and he was known as the wisest man ever. And he wrote the book of Proverbs to share a little bit of that with us. He reigned over the most prosperous, the richest and most successful period of time for the nation of Israel. And Solomon was known for his big building projects, his great justice, and also for his harem of wives, hundreds of wives and concubines. So now, short of saying the name Solomon, the author of Ecclesiastes mentions all of these identifying details in addition to this key phrase. I, the teacher, son of David, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. Now this is significant because the only son of David who was king over Israel in Jerusalem was Solomon. Because after him, Israel broke away from this kingdom run from Jerusalem to establish their own capital city. So whether it was written by Solomon himself or someone else writing from his perspective to examine his unique life, Ecclesiastes works as a perfect and contrasting sequel to the book of Proverbs, also in the wisdom literature section of the Bible. Because Proverbs presents the optimism that if you follow its general principles for living a wise, joyful, hardworking, just life, generally speaking, it will go better for you than if you live a foolish, lazy, negative, unjust life. Ecclesiastes is the skeptic, the realist, and sometimes the pessimist, struggling with when that doesn't work. Now, the book still agrees it's better to be wise than to be a fool. It's better to enjoy life than to not. It's better to work hard and achieve than be lazy and do nothing. And it's better to be just and good than, than unjust and wicked. Generally speaking, it will go better for you, but not always. So often we see the opposite in this world the unjust, the wicked, the strict, the lazy, the foolish, they prosper. And the, the just, the hardworking, the righteous, the joyful, the wise people suffer and experience tragedy. Too often we see that the corrupt get the favors. The guy that always shows up late gets the promotion. The bad boy gets the girl. And we learn in this world that nice guys finish last. So the author of Ecclesiastes, who calls himself the teacher or the professor, wants to take his students and us on a journey, an educational journey. Let's do an experiment, he says. Let's suppose that there is nothing else beyond the sun. You'll see that phrase throughout Ecclesiastes like 30 times. And it ends up being a key to unlocking Ecclesiastes. But it means that we're just focusing on this life here on earth. No heaven, no afterlife, just this. Now let's see if we can find the meaning and the purpose and that taunting feeling of lasting satisfaction. 
But this is an honest search, a skeptical search, an unbiased search. No Bible verses or cliches or cute Christian phrases, just honestly thinking about it. And he says, to simplify it for you, I've broken down the options into these categories. You can go down the pleasure path, the wisdom path, the achievement path, or the justice or morality path. Now let's try each one to their fullest to see where they lead. Which one will win? Now, a smart student would raise her hand and say, wait a minute, if we don't experience all of these to the maximum, then we'll never really know if in the end they satisfy. Meaning, if we don't have the power and the resources and the position to experience all the pleasure that this life can offer and to have all the wisdom that a person can have and to reach the highest levels of achievement, the highest levels of morality, if we can't do that, then we'll always be left wondering, what if I just had a little bit more? Maybe that would do it. Well, the professor has the solution for that. King Solomon would say, that's not a problem. I've had the unique ability to try all of these things to their fullest. And because of my wisdom, I was able to stay focused and aware throughout so that I could evaluate. That's what the phrase you'll see when I tested pleasure, achievement, etc. My wisdom stayed with me throughout. That's what that means. Because he had the unique power, resources, and position to try each of these paths to their fullest to see if any of them would bring fulfillment and satisfaction and meaning to life. So while the author of Ecclesiastes asks himself a number of questions that he leaves unanswered, he does arrive at a number of interesting conclusions. But I think it's better to be left hanging a little bit so we can discover together as we read the book and examine it in the following weeks. But one potential result is that seeking ultimate satisfaction through any of these earthly paths will be as pointless as making the bed. <laughs> Making the bed, yeah. <laughs> what I'm referring to is you get out of bed, you make the bed, and then hours later you undo what you just did to get into the bed. You do this every single day. And we could do a sermon series called Making the Bed. What's the point? No, I don't mean to get me wrong. I have no problem making the bed, but I have always struggled with the logic of it. You can ask my mom. But I felt validated when I heard someone say once, I don't make my bed for the same reason I don't tie my shoes after I take them off. Now, maybe I'm just too practical, but that's my translation for the phrase, it's like chasing after the wind, which is a phrase you'll see all over the Ecclesiastes experiments. Because chasing the wind would be this pointless, unending cycle of, of kidding yourself that eventually you will catch the wind. But will we ever have the, the fulfilling love and joy and peace that we're longing for? Well, while at first glance, Ecclesiastes seems like a book that's just a downer, a bummer, I think a closer look will reveal that it can actually be the opposite. Because while Ecclesiastes has some interesting conclusions, we also have the luxury a luxury that the author didn't have, the New Testament and what we know about Jesus. Because we've already seen how Ecclesiastes connects the theme of vapor and breath with James in the New Testament and Abel in Genesis. So I think it'll be interesting to see how Jesus fits into all of this. Because it's very possible that Jesus holds the answer that Solomon was looking for. Jesus himself said, I have come so that they may have life and have it to the full. So make sure to stay tuned and we'll see you next week.